Ni hao peng yo, and welcome to another read aloud with Lao Shi. Today we are going to learn about one Chinese invention that we still use today. You know, in China, many years ago, they came up with the first of several different things that we use today, including paper making, the first calculator called an abacus. A compass to help you find your way, and kites. Today we are going to read the story of kites. How kites were invented in China many years ago. The story of kites by Ying Chang Compostine, illustrated by Yongsheng Xuan. Long ago in China, children worked in the rice fields during the harvest season. The three Kong boys, Ting, Pan, and Kwai, marched through the fields, blew whistles, and banged pots and pans to scare away the birds. Twee, bang, clang. Pan stopped banging. I need a break to do my math homework. Why do the birds always eat our rice? Ting asked. Because they're hungry like me, and if I had wings, I would chase these birds away in the sky. Just as Kwai picked up his noodle bowl, a gust of wind whisked away the boys' straw hats, homework, and chopsticks. They ran after their things. When they caught up with their things, Ting asked, "Did you see how high my hat flew? We can make wings with straw." My homework stayed up longer," said Pan. "Paper is lighter." Hmm. I would use feathers," Kwai said thoughtfully. A month later, on a windy spring day, the boys climbed the hill near their village. Each wore a set of wings. Tings were made of woven straw. Pans were made of paper and bamboo chopsticks. Kwai made the biggest with chicken feathers. Ready, set, fly! Yelled Kwai. The boys jumped. They flapped their wings, but they all went in one direction: down. Cur splash. Cur plop, cur sploosh. They landed right in the middle of the rice field. What's happening? cried a farmer. Did rocks just fall off the hill? Did a chicken just fall from the sky? asked a lady. Did a straw hat make that noise? asked an old man. The villagers quickly gathered around. When the Kong boys emerged from the mud, even their parents couldn't recognize them. Oh, my wings! Groaned Kwai. I told you chickens can't fly," said Ting, dragging his straw wings out of the mud. "You should have used bird feathers," said Pan, yanking at his shredded paper chopstick wings. All the villagers started laughing, even Mama and Papa. After a long bath, Kwai said, "I wonder where I can find enough bird feathers to make new wings." Oh, I am not doing it again," said Ting. "My mouth still tastes like mud, and my arms hurt." "Me neither," agreed Pan. "And I didn't like it when everyone laughed at us." Ignoring his brother's complaints, Kwai said, "We're too heavy for wings, but I have another idea." The next day, the three boys painted scary faces on their straw hats and waited. Soon, a strong wind swept through and blew their hats right into a flock of birds. The birds fled from the scary faces. The boys jumped up and down, cheering. When the wind died down, the hats were nowhere to be found. But Pan's homework was still flying. That night, the boys had to help unhappy Papa make new straw hats. We can't fly our hats again. It will upset Papa," said Pan. But I wouldn't mind losing my math homework," said Ting mischievously. "And I like losing my chopsticks, so I don't have to wash them." Kwai giggled. A few days later, a new set of wings made from bamboo chopsticks and homework sailed up into the sky. The boys tied long strings to the wings to prevent them from flying away. The wings startled the birds for a while, but they soon grew used to them and ignored the wings. Boys yelled, "Mama, the birds are eating our rice! Keep blowing and banging!" 
We need to make our wings scarier, Kwai started banging on a pot. I know what we can do, Pan picked up a whistle. I have an idea too, said Ting. Fine, let's see who can scare the birds away, said Kwai. Two weeks later, the boys returned to the hill above the rice fields. Each house held something in his hands. Look, the Kong boys are going to fly again, one villager yelled. You mean jump into the rice fields, said another. Oh dear, they are wearing their nice clothes, Mama exclaimed. Papa, quick, go stop. But before Mama could finish her sentence, the three boys had let go of what was in their hands. Ting launched a colorful phoenix with a long tail. Pan released a blue butterfly. Kwai tossed up a dark bird with a bamboo flute tied underneath. The tail of the phoenix danced around in the gentle breeze and the butterfly's wings flapped up and down. All the villagers gathered around. What are those? Look, the dark bird is singing. Ho, oh, the wind is playing the dark bird's flute. The birds all flew away. Mama and Papa ran up the hill and the villagers followed. They saw that the boys had tied their inventions to a tree and were laughing and eating long life noodles. What are those things in the sky? asked an old man. Kwai stood up and said, They are meant to scare away the birds so we don't have to blow whistles or bang pots and pans anymore. What are they called? asked another villager. Ting and Pan looked at Kwai. Well, since they make music that sounds like the strings of the jung, I'll call them Fong Jung and Wind Jung or Kites. You have to teach us how to make them, said the old man. The Kong family opened the very first kite factory in China. They made kites of all colors and shapes. Better yet, no more birds came to eat their village's rice because the sky was full of kites, dragons, fish, flying tigers, and phoenixes.